Hey everybody, this is Amelia. I hope you listened to uh, part one before you listen to this one, because it's really important. We talked for such a long time, we couldn't stand to make you listen to it all at once. Aren't we nice? I hope you like part two. assuming anyone is, hello, um, you're either someone who is completely fascinated by what we're talking about because you literally have never had these thoughts before, or you're someone who is non-binary, potentially, and this is the first time possibly that you're, ha- that you're hearing a conversation like this because maybe, maybe you feel like you're on the defensive all the time. Because you feel like people don't understand you. And it's not necessarily that they have a problem with you. It's that their brains are trying to figure you out because that's what our brains do. And it's not necessarily a judgment. It's someone looks at you for more than a second and you're like, oh crap, they're looking at me. Well, but there's, you know. See, they can't be denied, though, that there's a lot of assholes. Of course there the are. World. Of course there are. I worked with... When I used to work at the university that I used to work for, yes. in the accounting office, mm-hmm. which, Lord, I have, how I got that job, I'll never know. Right? I know. But anyway, there was <laughs> there was a person, I honestly don't remember their name. I'm pretty sure I got friendly with him. Him with a question mark? And I, th- <laughs> I think... I think he was transgender. I think. I think he was female to male, but I, you know, I never asked and whatever. Right. But I do remember because... Yeah, because I don't ask. If they offer it, that's different, but I don't ask. ambiguity. Right. And goddamn those, you know, those old, you know, conservative accounting bitches. Uh, and, you know, the go for it office guys. They were so shitty to him. Uh, and, well, what's that? I don't know who that is. And they were uh, so, so mean uh, behind this person's back. And I was like, who the fuck cares? And that they and felt God comfortable knows, saying that shit around what you. What I was going to say, God only knows what these you... office bitches said about me behind my right? back. And I'm exactly. sure they did. Oh, I'm sure. But it makes exactly. me so, you know, so I understand the defensiveness. Absolutely. Because people are assholes. Yeah. And we're not. Right. You but, know. but that's but that's one of the things that I definitely wanted to, to talk about because um when when someone doesn't use your preferred pronoun or I, I mean, I'm getting better at using words like they. Grammatically, it kind of makes my brain explode a little bit to use they or them. Which in my brain is a plural as opposed. See, I've never even heard of that before. Oh, really? There's a lot of there's a lot of people who that that's their preferred, and then there's some other ones that are like, I don't know, shim. I don't know. There's words that are like, Ugh. it's like. But see, that's one of those things. If that's if that's your preferred word, if you have, eh, I you know, I, I'm trying to come up with a way to say this. It. it just listen to a person's heart before you listen to their words. If if they're tr- if if you get a sense that they are not attacking you and they are nice and they are just trying to understand or they're asking you a question, try I mean, I know it's hard, but we're on the same team, you know? It's like don't shut out people who are potentially allies because and I think I want to I want to tell I want to tell a quick story about um a guy that I met online one time and this was uh just a couple years ago 
Uh, there was there was this um, Sarah Silverman did this video because she does a lot of political stuff, and she did this video where it was about um, gender inequality, like as far as pay, you know, women being paid less than men. It was that kind of a thing, and she did this video where because she wanted to make more money. She and it was this this very just utterly absurd, silly thing. She went to a doctor and they literally brought her like trays, like platters, like 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 they would like in a restaurant, they'd come around and bring you all the desserts and you could pick, you know, you could see all the desserts. It was like trays of penises and trays of balls. And she was she was going to get a dick and balls because she wanted to make more money at her job. And it, and, and it was basically, it was about just the absurdity of literally dick and balls is the reason why this yeah. person makes more money than that person. And that was what the video was about. But that day it came out and Twitter exploded. And all these people were attacking Sarah Silverman for being transphobic. And I Which kind of, I'm, not, I'm not, I said I won't say anything is stupid, but that's fucking stupid. I, I know. And if you're one and of I those agree. people, I'm not apologizing. You're fucking stupid. It, it, may, it made me it so mad. it was a societal attack on exactly. societal norms. And if anything, it's trans positive. Right. So if you're one of those people, I'm sorry, you're fucking stupid. And it, it, it made me so mad in the moment. It made me so mad. And I tweeted in support of her. And then all of a sudden, this wave of people came at me. Because heaven forbid that I try to explain what that, that she is totally on the side of trans people that she like what the hell why are you being mad at her she is it not the no, problem yeah, it has nothing to do with trans it all it had everything to do with uh with with pay inequality yes and, and they social were social satire about how fucked up that is right and 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 I don't know why they weren't getting it but it but they just weren't and then I just because I had had this barrage of people coming at me and then this guy um his name is Nate, and I adore him. A trans man said something to me. I wish I could remember what the first thing he said was, but I was on the defensive so bad that my first response was him was, look, I don't really feel like being yelled at right now. I didn't even know this guy, and I I hit him with that. And he was like, um, I'm not yelling at you. And I said, I'm sorry. <laughs> because... I said, I said, I've had kind of a shitty afternoon because I'm getting attacked. But I said, I am absolutely willing to have a conversation if you are. And we ha we went back and forth for maybe an hour or two. Never met this guy before. It was the greatest conversation because I basically, I said, well, what, what do you see when you see this? And he, and he said, you know, well, it feels like, it feels like she's making fun of me. It feels like she's, she's like oversimplifying what I went through and all this stuff. And I said, I said, I can kind of see that. I said, I said, I get, yeah, I can see, I said, but. Did you watch the whole thing? It's a million percent a whole different issue. Right, right. <laughs> and I, I said, but I said, but you saw it all the way through, right? I mean, if the only thing you saw was her sitting in a in a doctor's office saying, "I'll take that dick and those balls," if that's literally all you saw, then there's no way you could understand what it was. But because of the context, and I and I said, I said. You know, it's about the absurdity of gender pay inequality. And I said, because it's so absurd, it's going to an absurd place. Not that transgender is absurd, 
but she's not representing a transgender person. In no way is she doing that. To, to say that she is, is oversimplifying what transgender is. And that she was just making a political and social point about pay inequality. And he was like, oh my God. He was like, Thank you so much because I, he goes, he goes, I'm so glad I talked to you. Because he probably didn't see the whole thing. You know, it's very possible. Shit storm and that's the other, you know. That he came at it because a lot of people who pile on did not see the original thing. And he was upset. And he had, he had a legitimate right to be upset for what he thought it was. definitely. But because we talked. And because we were willing to have this conversation, I'm tearing up and I don't want to try. Okay. But he is like this great guy. Oh my God. I'm going to have to cut this out. Oh, damn it. Oh, I don't know why I'm reacting so strong. I'm going to have to do some editing here. Oh, oh God. Oh shit. Why am I reacting like that? Why am I hormonal? <laughs> Oh no, maybe it's No, maybe it's, it's not. Twins. No, it's not that it's not it's not my time of the month. I shouldn't be bursting into tears for no reason. All right, I think I've got it under control. <sighs> wow, okay. So, but because I don't know a lot of female to male, he's one of the only ones I've really talked to. And um he and he's just he's very sweet and understanding and smart and he was working on he was writing a memoir when I first met him and I and it's it's finished now I still follow him on Twitter and I haven't talked to him in a while but it's like my brain goes to him and to that conversation because it's so unusual for someone to be willing to talk and uh, and it pisses me off when I get attacked for fucking nothing and I don't want to cry again, but I'm just going to let it go. But this is, you know, but that, you know, this is a whole topic for a whole different podcast. Right. But I want to just say yeah. that that's part of the, you know, like I'm not on Twitter. Oh, yeah. Good I for am you. not <laughs> on, I don't understand other than being on Facebook and I'm not even on that much. Oh no. God, I'm not in anything because I, it drives me nuts and I don't get it. And I know that there's like Like the knee jerk reactions to things. There's such a propensity for people. And then they, you know, to do that and then they don't fucking back up. You know, they double down. It's like, well, it doesn't even matter. And I know that I'm wrong, but I'm really not wrong because I'm oppressed. Oh God. You know, oh, yeah. and that, anyway, but that kind of, and that's why I, I, I really dislike yeah. social media and the internet so oh, yeah. fucking much. Oh, yeah. You know. Down beneath the deep blue sea, where one day I chanced to be, the mermaids gave a very swell affair. I looked out from my submarine at the queerest ball I'd ever seen. Not a soul on earth I knew was there. Of course they did the tango, and no one made a slip. Of all the guests assembled there, each one could do the dip. At the mermaid's fancy ball, in Father Neptune's hall. The little eels were pickled and they did a naughty wiggle. Although it shocked a few old crabs, it made the bluefish giggle at the mermaid fancy ball. They had no bar at all, but I didn't hear a sigh, for not a guest was dry at the mermaid fancy ball. I have a tendency sometimes, you know, to post things on, you know, to forward articles and stuff on my Facebook when I am on there. Yeah. But I do actually read them. Right. Before, you know. Right. The content of the article is more important than the headline. I do actually read them and... Yeah. Anyway. Anyway. Whole different topic, but that just needs to be said. But it's a it's a similar thing that it's you know that it's the reaction to oh I see a word I don't like or whatever, and that the automatic reaction is 
that person must be an asshole because I'm having a feeling. You and know, it's and like, I, I'm and sorry you're uncomfortable, but oh my god. I am yeah. a very Nelly gay man <laughs> who's been beaten up. Right. Who's been spit on. Yeah. You know, I I get it. I Absolutely. get about having knee jerk reactions to stuff like that. Yeah. But fucking grow up and read the whole thing and really understand the context because right. there's a fifty percent chance that you're wrong. Oh sure. And you if know? and if you and if something sets you on fire that fast it's almost better than 50% that you're wrong. Because a lot of times the thing, you know, especially articles, like they'll put an incendiary word in the headline just to make you click on it, just to piss you off to make you click on it. Then you open it up and go, oh, that's not what I thought it was about at all. That That they're fucking with you. And so it's like a lot of times the thing that's making you mad isn't even the issue, isn't even what's being discussed. And when you, and if you get hung up on you know, yeah, but I'm feeling uncomfortable right now. Okay, well, we all feel uncomfortable sometimes. But if the person, if 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 they use a word that you don't like, because maybe they don't fully understand, you could look at it as, well, maybe, you know, they, yeah, it's a possibility that they're an asshole, but look at the context of what they said. And if or, they are, by all means, tell them. By all, means tell, by all means, tell them to fuck off. But, but if yeah. you don't, I'll tell them for you. <laughs> but but a lot of times, you know, you're you're missing out on the opportunity to either teach someone, you know, or to be the example of the night the, the oh well, what if you're the first person of that type that they've ever interacted with? And they just had this automatic assumption that ev- that you're all pricks, or what you know, whatever it is. And then you go, but but hang on, let me just talk to you for a second, and you know, and then oh, heaven forbid, a friendship comes out of it, you know, and then the world changes. Uh, you know, this, funny, <laughs> this happened to me today. Really? At discussion group, I go to a Unitarian church in New- in uh, San Antonio. And the discussion group... I just love that a Unitarian Universalist yes. <laughs> church even exists in San Antonio. That's amazing. Yeah. So, <laughs> I, you know, I go to a discussion group that in, in before the service. Yeah. And so, you know, we were just sort of talk, going around the circle talking, you know, blah, 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 blah. And the, the, the facilitator was saying, oh, I just saw this movie about... Uh, the romance between Barack Obama and Michelle Obama, and it was really, really great. Oh, movie. I just saw the trailer for that. It yeah, was cute. Anyway, and this guy that that was new to the group, or not, well, not new to the group to me, but knew everybody there. Oh, okay. You know, he was just sort of like shaking his head, and and you know, they were kind of joking back and forth, going, "I know you're on the opposite end of the spectrum." He's like, "Oh, Obama, blah blah blah." And apparently, you know, this guy is, you know, Trump supporter, really Republican, okay. which was very unusual to see. There, at but, that, but, but then in again, that particular group. But then and, again, they really are accepting of everyone, yeah. which is part of the beauty of it. And that. I yeah. immediately started to judge this guy, right, and to think that he was an asshole because he likes Trump and he right. wasn't pro right. Obama. And I really had to Just, tell myself. Don't judge. Right. He's also in this room He's with you. He's in here in a yeah. group where he knows there's atheists, he knows there's pagans, he knows there's right. lesbians, he knows there's gay, you know. And somehow he's in there being okay with you. Yeah, and yeah. I really had right. to tell myself, don't judge. Right. Right. You know, but it was interesting, but it's I so also, hard not to judge. It's so hard not to judge because Trump of people him <laughs> being in that yeah. room. It was also difficult for me to share. Yeah. And I did. Like, eventually you felt like, you, you know, could, yeah. and it was really interesting. It was just really interesting how that happened to me this morning. Oh, yeah. You know. Yeah. Oh, definitely. Just, just like in that moment. And all of a sudden, it's almost like you can't, you're in that moment and you can't even listen to the conversation going on around you because you're having to talk to yourself in your head. And you're, ha- you're having to have a conversation with yourself, being like, just be quiet. 
Just sit there. It's okay. No one's hurting you. You're fine. You're safe. You're okay. <laughs> you know? He's just a guy. He's just sitting there. Yeah. And then you end up missing out potentially on yeah. what's being talked yeah, about because obviously you're in your own head. Yeah. can't be what I would have judged a Trump supporter to be. Right. Because he wouldn't be there. Granted, most of them probably are. But right. who knows? But you never know. Yeah. They could have whatever their reason is. There could be a reason we couldn't even imagine. But, but you know, again, yeah. really on TV, definitely online, yeah. all we see are the loony Ted Nugent people and the white supremacists. Oh. And while well, that's the only thing we see of the Trump supporters. Oh, true. So who really knows? And I right. have never watched a speech that man has said because yeah. the little one minute sound bites that I get. Just infuriate you. Infuriate me. <laughs> yeah. So I don't really know. Yeah, I haven't listened to more than maybe you five know, minutes which is what I was just yeah. talking about with yeah. the other issue, which is right. why I'm sharing this. Right. Because I'm right. guilty of it too. It's easy to do. Oh, absolutely. You know. Oh, yeah. So, but you know, that's one of those things. Um, I don't know if everybody remembers. Well, hopefully people do because it was awesome. Um, back in 2000, Nine, two thousand ten. God, how long ago was that? Um, when John Stewart and Stephen Colbert had the 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 big rally in Washington D.C., the rally to restore sanity and or fear that I was fortunate enough to go to, which was one of the greatest experiences of my life. But uh, the part of the idea behind that rally was. John Stewart had started this this discussion about how 80% of the people are too they're too busy to go to rallies. They're too busy to spend a lot of time online arguing with people. They've got they've they've got kids, they got to take somebody to band practice. They they're driving junior to karate. They've they've got their, you know, they've got their bridge club. They've got to get some sleep sometime. You know, they have a job or two. And that the vast majority of people aren't involved in all that. They're just, they're just going about their day. And they're the agreeable people. And it's that way with religion. It's that way with politics. It's that way with, you know, you get, you get mad at a group of people because you've seen people like that and they're awful. And it's like, yeah, but that was like 10 people. Like, if you actually counted the number yeah. of people that you've seen that in your mind represent that group of people, then, of course, you're going to, you know, you're judging, you know, 10 million people by three people, you know. And that the idea that, you know, oh, well, all the people who showed up to a Glenn Beck rally or whatever, all of them agreed with him. But those are just the people that showed up. The entire rest of the country couldn't be bothered to, mm -hmm. to even go. And so the, the, that, the rally that they did, and they only expected like 30,000 people to show up. And then I think it ended up being like, oh God, I might be wrong, but I think it was like 100,000 people. It was insane. It went it, like the, the crowd went almost all the way back to the Washington Monument. It was it was crazy. It was so many people. And it was like, and they just could, they could not believe that many people felt, not just, not just found the time to go, but, but made the effort to go. And that every single person that was there represented reasonable people and people who were just perfectly happy to ha spend a day hanging out with a hundred thousand other people. And everyone, there, you know, Nobody got in a fight with anyone. Nobody punched anybody. It was like the best behaved group of people you could ever imagine. And everyone was nice. And if it had been anything else, it would have looked like some kind of crazy mob. But because we literally were representing all the people in the middle who aren't angry all the time mm -hmm. and don't feel the need to scream at people. And it, and it really... I was so impressed by that because it really, it really kind of cemented my belief that 
the vast majority of people, yes, there are assholes, but most of us are okay. We may not, we may not know the things you know. We may not have had the experiences you've had, but don't assume that people have a problem with you just because they don't understand. It surely was the limit. A lobster turned quite red and said the tango isn't in it, but the queerest noise of all. I heard a codfish fall when Father Neptune, wise old guy, at a mermaid winked his eye. At the mermaid fancy ball, at the mermaid fancy ball, in Father Neptune's hall. The weak fish fainted dead away, creating quite a bustle. It made them very strong again when they were fed on muscle at the mermaid fancy ball. The sweetest thing of all. For dessert they served a dish of delicious jellyfish at the mermaid fancy ball. If, if you approach people with accepting them, if you, I mean, if, so, if someone comes at me with Oh, you cisgender asshole. I, you know, the claws might come out a little bit because I don't appreciate that. But simply the fact that someone is talking to me is not a reason for me to get upset with anybody. Attack me and I may or may not attack back. But yeah, it's like, you know, I assume it is safe to assume that I'm okay with you, whoever who you are. Whoever you are. Whatever you do, however you identify yourself, whoever you want to have sex with or not have sex with, whatever you do for a living, whatever. I have no problem. As long as you're not hurting anybody. And as long as you're not a Ted Nugent fan. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because that's, that's some bad taste right there. That's some, that's some unfortunate. But yeah, but it's, you know, it's just one of those... Even, you know, even if someone, I don't know. I mean, I know there's, like, there's a lot of people who, you know, they talk about, oh, you're, oh, well, you know, when your parents send you all those emails about what Rush Limbaugh said, it's like, no, I really don't have that experience. And I feel bad for the people who have to deal with that in their own families to that extent. I mean, that has got to be horrible. But, you know, I don't agree with everything in my family. It's just not that extreme, I guess. But it's just, you know, it just, just because, just because your parents are jerks, doesn't mean everyone you, doesn't mean everyone of their age group even is going to be a jerk. You know, we, we're in our late forties. Some of you listening, we might be the age of your parents. You know, we might've, you know, graduated from high school around the same time. God, that makes me, that makes me feel sick. <laughs> I'm technically old enough I could be someone's grandmother, but that's, but, ugh, that just freaks me out. Uh, but it's like, just, just because we're the age of your parents and if your parents are jerks, that doesn't mean that we're jerks. That doesn't mean that we have the same attitudes as other people. So just, you know, and I, I realize we're kind of repeating ourselves, but people, people are nice. Listen to their hearts. Don't, you know, just because someone uses a word you don't like, just because... Just because you have a preferred pronoun. Oh, and that's another thing. I, and this is a legitimate question. And it may not be true for everyone. So, you know, who, if anyone wants to answer me. Uh, when it comes to things like preferred pronoun, um, if, I, if I happen to run into you on the street or we work in the same department or we meet at a party and we're having a conversation and I, I, I mean, usually when you're talking to someone, you don't use a pronoun. But if I, if someone walks up and I introduce you to them and I, and I use, you know, I say her or him or whatever, and that's not your thing, is it, honestly, is it, I mean, because I don't, I'm not going to make assumptions about every single person that I meet that they are not going to be binary because the odds are the vast majority of people are binary. So if I happen to come across a non-binary person and I'm not aware of them being non-binary, um, I've, I've heard a lot of people say, well, the way you would know someone's uh, preferred pronoun is, is to ask them. But if I just met you and I don't even know anything about you, wouldn't 
am I, am, is it, is it wrong of me to think that the onus is on you to tell me what you would like to be called? Is it rude of me to think that? Have you ever thought about that? I think it's rude to ask. That, I, 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 I don't, who knows I've what tried. a person's situation is. Like, if I asked you, you'd be like, um, him? Yeah. And then you'd be like, why are you asking me? I'm like, I don't know. I thought you'd seen girly. I don't know. I don't know. Is that wrong? Because when I try to imagine, I try to role play things in my head to see, to see if I feel comfortable. And it's like, even just imagining it in my head, I feel uncomfortable well, you asking. Can even maybe in a way to figure it out is to ask their name. But, you know, if they say their name is Peggy, then they probably want to be called she, regardless of. But but pro- but they that's still a their problem. Name is Roland. They probably want to be happy, <laughs> you know. But and if they if... don't, they need to understand that that might be confusing, and they need to tell you. And I and I would like to think, but because I, you know, I don't want to. I don't want to offend people. I don't want to upset people. But what I'm being, you know, but I feel like in a lot of these times, I might be. I'm being put in a position if your name is Roger, but you can, but you identify as non-binary and your name is Roger, which is about as male a name yeah. as there could be. How, how do you honestly think, even if you're wearing eyeliner or something, how am I supposed to, what, how, how would I know that if you didn't tell me? So, and I, you know, and I, I haven't been in this situation but I've heard people talk about how important it is to ask. And it's like, oh, why Why do I have to ask? I'm not the one, I'm not, you know, I'm willing to do whatever you say. Like, I just um, listened to this this awesome um, uh, comedy album, Rhea Butcher's new album. Go get it. It's awesome. And she was talking about political correctness. And she gave this example of uh, if someone says, well, hey, my name is Richard and, and, you know, and most people call me Dick, but I prefer to be called Rich. And she said, well, then you say, oh, hello, Rich. OK, Rich. And that you just told me you want to be called Rich. I call you Rich. That's all. That's all. The, that's all it is. I'm not going to be an asshole and call you Dick when you just told me you want to be called Rich. So. It seems it, it seems like it's an awful lot of pressure on me to first figure out whether or not how you identify and what pronoun you want or, or that I have to even guess that about you to begin with when odds are, I'm probably not going to be able to tell. I grew up in the eighties. Guys all wore makeup. There was a lot of guys in makeup in the eighties who were not, who did not identify as anything other than male and sometimes a little on the hyper masculine side, even though they were wearing makeup. So maybe my, Perception is skewed <laughs> because because I I was in high school in the eighties. I don't know, but I don't know. That's just that's just something that I think about sometimes. And if and if anyone would like to answer me, email us, tweet at me, tweet at us. I'm very I'm I'm honestly very curious about that. And and if and what other people's experiences are with that because I haven't I haven't personally had that, but like, you know, the, the person that I, that I work with, I don't see them, them, I'm going to say them, although I used to say him, I don't see them that often, but I, I don't, I don't feel, I mean, I actually know them and I know their name and their name is kind of in the middle-ish. I, you know, their name could go either way, but leans more towards male. And I, 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 I actually know and like this person and they like me and we have a fine working relationship, even though we don't see each other. And I still don't feel comfortable asking a question of them. And, you know, I, I love them. They're, they're awesome. They're adorable. They're very sweet. And they, I get along with them. Great. But I, I mean, I can't imagine if I don't feel comfortable talking to this person, how the hell am I going to ask that of a stranger? You know what I mean? And I don't think you should. I, yeah, but I... Mm. And I think it's silly. Yeah. If, 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 if some, you know, I, if people need to explain. I mean, I still yeah. have people assuming that, like, me and Leah are a couple when I go to church with her. 
Oh, yeah. And I'm like, and that's like a pretty much a gay church. <laughs> right. You know, so you can never assume, no matter how obvious you think you are, right. that people are going to... Oh, sure. They're going to go... That's a good example. This, they yeah. are going to go with the mainstream to go, and you yeah. can't be offended if they do. But you're walking you in there with a female friend. You can be offended if you tell them, and they refuse to... And they refuse to accept it, accept or they refuse it, to believe you. Then get offended, but don't be offended, and it's... Right. I mean, well, shit, you used to work you used to work in a hotel, and you would answer the phone, and people would call you ma'am. Uh-huh. That's not necessarily... You know what your voice sounds like. And I didn't you- <laughs> care. I was just like, I just thought it was fine, whatever. I didn't care. And, you know, I mean, I my voice would, you know, especially if I have a cold or something, I, I know I sound like a dude sometimes, but if someone, if I'm on the phone, if they can't see me, yeah, they're probably going to think I'm a dude. Because my voice is way down. Yeah, and I, I, I that didn't, didn't bother me at all. I was just like, whatever, you know. <laughs> exactly. It's like, oh, I must be sounding especially girly today. <laughs> oh well, I think um, I think that was pretty good. Uh, we would really, we're we're hoping that we didn't upset anybody. We're hoping that you stuck with us and listened to all of this because we're just, you know, we're just two people trying to understand things and. We're hoping that there's some people out there who didn't, who never thought about it before, who might be interested and might look some stuff up. Oh, and I, I found some really cool articles, and I'll put links up to stuff. And um, that would be that would be pretty cool. And so let's have a conversation about it, because I have no problem talking about this some more. Because I'm sure there's something on the on my note. I'm looking at my notes. I'm sure I skipped something, but that's okay. <laughs> it's okay. It'll come up again. And maybe some maybe sometime we'll talk about sexuality. Ooh. Maybe. Mm. I don't know. <laughs> maybe we have to see how this one goes, right? <laughs> Thank you so much for listening. We really appreciate all of our listeners, and we want to do something special for you, but we need a little help. Leave us a review on iTunes or Stitcher, or both, and then copy and paste it into an email. Send it to us at pitmeandamelia at gmail.com. Two listeners will be chosen at random, and they'll receive a special gift. We will announce the winners in episode 12, which airs on October 21st. Get more information at our website, bitchandbee.libsyn.com. That I like to pet, and every evening we get set. I stoke it every chance I get. It's my girl's for me. Seldom plays and never purrs, and I love the thoughts it stirs. But I don't mind because it's hers, my girl's for me. Often it goes out at night, returns at break of dawn. No matter what the weather's like, it's always nice and warm. It's never dirty, always clean, in giving thrills, never mean. But it's the best I've ever seen, it's my girl's pussy. Thank you.